So let's have a lesson on this piece by Meritz. Um, this is an arrangement by Meritz found in a Swedish manuscript. And, um, and, it's, and the subtitle is saying from the Russian people. It's a Russian folk song. Um, it's probably more well known as a Ukrainian folk song, um, but you can look that up and there's more information. Um, you can just follow the link underneath the video. And you can pick up the sheet music um, underneath the video too. There's a link for that. So, um, a couple of things to talk about in this piece, but pretty straightforward in some ways. Um, there's a couple of little fingering things to talk about, but otherwise um, somewhat straightforward. Of course, you can play the melody on its own, and you should. Um, you could have a lot of fun. I played it pretty straightforward in a pretty straightforward way. Um, you could do, uh, if you listen to vocal performances like by choirs and stuff, they sometimes speed up and get very um, excited near the end. Um, I didn't do that in today's performance, but you can, you can experiment with those things. But playing the melody on its own will allow you to experiment more freely with those kinds of things. The melody is just all the stems up. It's the highest voice in the piece. through the melody and make sure you can phrase it in the way that you want really nice and smoothly then when you add the other notes just try to keep the quality level of that melody nice and high um, I don't have too much else to say I think a walkthrough of this piece will be beneficial um, just to um, cover some of the fingerings and um, symbols in the piece uh, there's some little dynamic markings by merits but it, it um, or by the the manuscript copyist, but nevertheless, I think it's just saying like emphasize the, the cut time pulse more than more than four beats per bar. Just one, two, three. You know, just really keeping the one and the three fairly um, rhythmic. I switched to three here on the A, so that two and one can grab the E and the G sharp. If you haven't seen a double sharp symbol before, that's that little X. Um, and harmonically, F double sharp is the same pitch as G. And you might ask, well, why is it written as F double sharp instead of G? Um, it has to do with music theory. Um, we won't get into it today, but nevertheless, that little symbol means double sharp. And so that F double sharp is just an open G in this case, or your open third string is a better way to describe it, because it is an F double sharp. But you can play the open third string. Open. I'm generally using alternating fingers on the top and unless it's three note chords, but you know, you try to like alternate a little bit. M, I, M, and use your thumb for the bass notes. End up with three again. And then use four, three here because of this second finger that happens next. Um, that fingering I think is pretty important in this piece, especially at higher tempos. So third finger on A, so it's a little irregular, but it's very well worth it. Just make sure your, your left hand is aligned. You want to bring this knuckle in close so that you can grab that C very easily with your fourth finger. If your knuckle is far away, you won't be able to reach that C, and uh, it'll be very problematic, and you'll, you'll feel like, why did he put this fingering in here? But bring, align that hand, and you should be able to grab that C very easily. That way two and one can play here. Same thing here, use four, three. So pretty easy, but at the same time, you just especially people more on the beginner side, are, are, they're gonna wanna watch their fingering and their alignment of their left hand very carefully. Second half of the piece gets a little bit more exciting. Um, I thought about what fingering to use, but really I'm just using A on the top voice, just to keep things simple. So A and then P, I, M. So remember the melody is the top voice, so don't crash out those bottom notes too much. Some students might find um, that bar with the repeated A PMI pretty tough. And um, there's something about the repetition of that figure that um, can make you trip up. But if you just practice it really slowly for a few days, you'll be just fine. Your hand will um, learn the muscle memory that's needed. It's not hard. 
it's just trips up the brain for some reason. So just give it some time and you'll be just fine. Just practice it very slowly. Seems like such an easy thing to do, but you find you might find that at faster speeds you do trip up a bit. Um, in this bar, I'm doing a double sweep with my thumb. So A, thumb, thumb, I, and then M A on the top notes. That way I can do this I P I at the end. So A. bar um, 11 one more time. A, P, P, I, M and A, I, P, I. And then I just use M and P here with I on the inner voice. I think that's the easiest way to do that part, just M, I on the top voices. Or in the top and the accompaniment voice. Here, I'd recommend using your thumb for the down stems um, on the bass notes, like M, P, P, I, M, P, P, I. Because of the, the double thumb that occurs elsewhere in this line, I think just keeping that straight forward is better than, for example, going like M, thumb, I, or M, thumb, I, M. Just use your thumb for those lower bass strings to keep it clear for the whole line. So again, that 4, 2, because the third finger is playing the A, 4, 2, careful of that bar, bar 14, it has a double bass note there, so the texture changes halfway through the bar, which can, if you're sight reading at faster speeds, it can throw you and you'll accidentally just do something different, right? I'll go back to bar 13. use my second finger on the C in that bar. Just, you don't have to, you could use the first finger, but I like to hold that G sharp and get the, the E harmony ringing just a little bit longer. It's not necessarily written that w in that way, but that getting that harmony to ring out is kind of nice. Three, one, open. That way you can sustain some of those notes. Again, um, the, that last line might seem really complicated, but in some ways it's super simple, right? You just play the melody, bring the melody out, and uh, just follow the fingering. take some close attention so that's why I would place this piece more at like the grade three level instead of grade two um, or even grade four just because um, you, you there's a little bit more um, close attention that you have to pay and um, also you kind of have to uh, use a couple fingerings that I don't want to say the word awkward fingering because they're not awkward at all um, but they're not that regular for like the early beginner grade level so straightforward piece, but um, some things that you do have to pay attention to. And then um, once you've learned the piece nice and slowly, maybe with a metronome, uh, try to have some fun with it and you can experiment with that idea of speeding up. You could start, you know, that second half slow. You know, and just, and, and have a fun time with it. Uh, experimenting and whatnot, or you can just play it probably the way that Merritt's did is in a pretty straightforward way. One more thing I'll add about this piece is that you might feel like some of the notes are a little bit um, suspicious, like in the last line. Um, some of the, the pitch, um, they don't seem like they may be 100% belong, but harmonically they do work, and one thing to pay attention to is that the bass notes are actually the same on 
on the various lines. So for example, in bar five, A, B, C, B, and the bass line in bar 13, A, D, C, B, they're displaced rhythmically, but they're the same notes. And um, you'll find that throughout the piece, like so the, the bass notes really do match up. It's kind of like the, the two sections mirror each other uh, very loosely, but with some figuration. So keep that in mind when you're playing it. And if you, if you bring it up the tempo and, and, and play it fairly straight, uh, you'll find that it, it does work harmonically quite nicely.